Let's talk about camera gear for the average adventure goer or someone that does a lot of solo photography and filming. Or hell, maybe you're looking to start making your own content this year. Let's get into my very amateur current setup and what I'll call version 1.0 since I haven't done a video like this before. I'll also follow up soon with what I have for a current YouTube studio setup and my current home gym setup. So subscribe and hit the alert button to be notified when those come out. So I research a lot about fitness products, but I also have to research gear to film for the content on this channel. Much of what I see out there in terms of top YouTubers reviewing cameras are professional filmmakers, videographers, or photographers, which is great and absolutely fine, but when you look at their setup, they're using tens of thousands of dollars worth of gear. I'm none of that. Every piece of gear I need is the minimum requirement in terms of my return on investment, meaning that I have to believe it's absolutely necessary to improve the quality of my content. Now, I am currently contemplating upgrading my main camera, the one you're seeing here, for reasons I'll get into in this video, but for now, let's take a look at what I would consider a relatively modest and low budget setup. And as we progress through the camera gear, I'll take you through my thought processes on why I made purchases over the past 18 months or so since I've been focused on this channel. Links to everything will be in the description. Another thing to keep in mind is that I set YouTube milestones for myself to invest in my channel. So each piece of equipment I have after my first A6400 and the video micro that we'll discuss was purchased after reaching my set goals. Let's start off with something that everyone has, which is your phone, which I'm currently using mine for my teleprompter. I have the iPhone 12, not 12 Pro, just the regular old 12. It's always on me and I can reach for it and film content when the opportunity presents itself. The stabilization of the 4K 30fps is decent enough for most people, although it still has limitations in low light. You'll also notice a lot of pixelation when you get into the editing and it's a pain in the ass to color correct. Something that you may want to look at doing in the future using LUTs or lookup tables, like in what I use which is Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. For that reason, I made my first camera purchase, which was the Sony a6400, and even bought a second one about six months later. So why isn't the phone good enough? Much of the effects you see, like the blurred background on the phone, are digital effects rather than from the actual image being captured. Because the phone does this processing on its end, there's really little room to make corrections, which is a big deal when you're doing what I'm doing, which is filming everything by yourself. The ability to shoot in flat image profiles and adjust things like the aperture, ISO, and shutter speed makes the image you see on a DSLR or a mirrorless camera much better than with a phone. And I just can't see phones ever catching up to the amount of control you have with a standalone camera. Now, if you're asking yourself why Sony, I just love their selection of mirrorless cameras, which were much lighter and portable than the others at the time of my purchase, and I just like the color science. Once I got ingrained into this ecosystem, I just stuck with them over other brands. So. The 6400 is more of a beginner budget camera, mainly because of the APS-C crop sensor versus full frame sensors on more expensive cameras. Meaning full frames can capture 1.5 times the amount of image data and size. This gives you limitations in terms of the data that this camera collects at 1080p and 4K, which again can become a problem for me in editing. That's exactly why I'm currently contemplating making my first full frame purchase as mistakes in the filming can't be fixed in editing and it's a huge issue for my time. I'm not a full time YouTuber and work a 40 to 50 plus hour a week consulting job so financial investment for me becomes a return on my time. I've also been very thankful and appreciative for the support through affiliate marketing and ad revenue on this channel and have the ability to reinvest. So thank you everyone for your support. But for the average person needing a camera on the go, this APS-C crop sensor is absolutely fantastic. So I have two. One that never leaves the teleprompter as you see here, and the other I use for top down shots. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back up top so we can get some nice top down footage for the rest of this video. And there we go. And nowadays, I wouldn't even recommend the 6400 as your first camera anymore. With the release of this one, the Sony ZV E10. It's much cheaper with the kit lens than the A6400 still is, and the ability to change lenses makes it a better option, in my opinion, than the point-and-shoot ZV-1. The reason I purchased the ZV-E10 was for a few reasons. First, the new articulating screen by Sony. The old Sony's had a terrible design with their flip-up screen that made it difficult to see at some angles. When I was first learning to shoot video myself, I made a ton of mistakes just because I couldn't see. This new screen moves every which way, and I love it. It also puts a huge red square around the screen to let you know when it's recording. You don't know how many times my dumbass went through an entire shooting sequence only to realize I didn't record. In fact, it just happened. The memory card filled up and I didn't notice the whole time and I had a format and I'm restarting right now. The second reason, it's this form factor. 
It's smaller and lighter than the 6400s I have and therefore easier to have on the go. I'm just not a big fan of the image quality on the iPhone, so the ZV-E10 has become my new gym carry and for travel. I just love having this little setup. Like, here, I got the Rode Video Micro. Slip into the hot shoe. It's not a hot shoe enabled mic, but I plug it into the mic. And look at it. Just look how compact this little thing is with the micro attached. I love it. And lastly, the active mode with digital image stabilization, which is missing in the 6400s. I don't have to worry about carrying a gimbal and can shoot smooth video with just the camera in hand. For all those reasons, check out the ZV-E10 for your first camera if you're looking. If you're thinking to yourself, the iPhone image is completely fine, well, you're absolutely right. Unless, of course, you're constantly staring at the image in the editing process, and it will definitely bother you. Plus, it's really nice to shoot with a dedicated camera and taking stills. I just love that camera click. It just feels so good, even if it's not actually mechanical anymore. But if you're wondering why choose the 6400 over the ZV-E10, well, the 6400 has a viewfinder, it's got a completely sealed body, whereas the ZV-E10 has neither of those things. The A6400 also performs better in low light, but lacks the act of stabilization. If you plan on vlogging or shooting on the go, I'd go with the ZV-E10. If you just want a tad better camera and you can afford it and are focused on taking stills, go with the 6400. Now, we go to drones, which I made a big mistake on. Content tip, no one gives a shit about your drone video. When you're storytelling, use it sparingly, if at all, to set up the next scene. Like, you shoot aerial footage of an area to transition into change of scenery. Unless, of course, you just want to play with it, then go ahead, by all means, buy one. I'm a big fan of DJI products, and my first purchase was the Mavic Mini. It doesn't shoot 4K, but it is, and also its successor is, 249 grams, which is one gram under the FAA requirement for registration. But guess what? It's only $5, so who cares? And the Mini has pretty much been collecting dust. I actually need to sell this thing. So, I bought the Mavic Air 2S, but not for aerial drone shots, but for the wonderful active track feature, and the 2S came with DJI's most advanced obstacle avoidance. Again, I film by myself, so it's like I hired a little robot buddy to follow me. You can see from this sample footage of me running in downtown Austin, the drone does a fantastic job avoiding trees and power lines. That's the only reason I have this drone, but I love it. I also have the DJI Ronin SC that has active track, but I'll talk more about that in another video, as well as a dedicated review video of the Mavic Air 2S. Again, subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when those come out. Next, we got GoPros. I have the Hero 7 Black that I've had for years and then recently purchased the GoPro Max. It's actually still got the film on it. As far as the regular GoPros go, the 7 is great and you can buy it for really cheap. The only reason I would buy a GoPro 8 or later is for streaming or using as a webcam without the addition of something like the Elgato Cam Link. Other than that, the new iterations of the GoPros really haven't shown me anything. Sure, the new ones have a display for filming yourself, which is pretty important, and increased picture quality, but that does not drive their new products every year. From what I can tell from GoPro, it's the fact they're publicly traded and need to move new SKUs. Same reason Apple comes out with a new phone every single year. So if you don't need to stream or use it as a webcam, grab a seven black. But I also have the Max, which again, was a focus on being a solo content creator. I have the ability to adjust in editing the image, even capture some of the environment, as well as use their invisible selfie stick mode. It's not as good as others like the Insta360, but once I got ingrained into their ecosystem, again, I tend to stay there. Lastly, this may be the most important, microphones. If you're filming video, audio quality is incredibly important, probably more so than the actual image. I hate, hate, hate my earlier videos listening to the audio and apparently so did the viewers or lack of viewers. So you show up on the show and all of a sudden you see something and you're like, wow. I have the Rode Video Micro and my favorite that I'm using right now, the Rode Video NTG and I'm actually starting to use it again. And then here are the Rode Wireless Go mics. They just came out with a second one. I think it comes with two now and I've been using these for most of my videos. The micro is plenty fine, but the sound is definitely better on the video NTG if you're going to go vlogging. I'd recommend anything Rode makes. Even if you're just gonna use your phone, please upgrade the microphone. And that's it. I'm just gonna start adding in some video tech just as it pertains to fitness and adventure as I accumulate it. So my advice is to start with the minimum amount you can afford, even if it's just your phone, and then go for it. But invest in better audio. 
The content subject matter is most important, but if you can't go step up, I'd go and grab you a ZVE 10. So go make some content, it's a ton of fun. Also, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more of my videos coming at you soon. Also comment below if you have some input on whether or not I should actually go full frame with my camera setup, or if there's any other video gear out there I should try out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.